morning runners today we are going to talk about immobilization of yeast by the entrapment method this is prepared by dr padmani bharat department of pharmacognosy oxford college of pharmacy bangalore learning outcomes the learner will be able to explain the immobilization of the yeast analyze whether the yeast is immobilized or not by performing a chemical test aim of the experiment is to immobilize the enzyme present in yeast by physical method chemicals and glassware required are yeast sodium alginate calcium chloride distilled water beaker petri dish glass rod now coming to the principle let us know what is enzyme immobilization enzyme immobilization may be defined as a process of confining the enzyme molecule to a solid support over which a substrate is passed and converted to product so the advantage of immobilized enzyme over the free or soluble enzyme that enzyme can be recovered at the end of reaction therefore they can be reused economy of the reaction is improved the pure product can be obtained as a separation of enzyme from this product occurs stability increases in many cases because of the binding of enzyme to the matrix and enzyme properties such as activity stability etc can be modified the efficiency of the catalytic reaction is better in many cases better control of reaction can be achieved this is possible because of the withdrawal of the polycatalyst from the system catalytic process can be operated continuously so these are the advantages of the immobilization so before we talk about how the yeast is immobilized let us see the different methods of immobilization we have two methods physical method and chemical method in physical method we have adsorption method entrapment method micro encapsulation method membrane confinement method and in chemical method we have chemical bonding and by cross linkage we can do the enzyme immobilization so now coming to the yeast today's experiment yeast is physically entrapped so what do you mean by entrapment entrapment means enzyme can be entrapped into a cross linked gel matrix by allowing the gel to be formed in aqueous solution containing one or more enzyme here the enzyme are physically entrapped in the lattice and because of this they cannot escape by permeation the enzyme cannot escape by permeation however the substrate and product can diffuse in and out respectively due to the small size so in entrapment method we have three different types that is inclusion in gel inclusion in fiber and inclusion in the micro capsule so in the gel the enzyme will be trapped in the gel and inclusion in fiber means the enzyme will be supported on a fiber format and in micro encap micro capsulation or encapsulation the enzyme will be entrapped in micro capsulation formed by monopolymer mixtures such as polyamine or calcium alginate so this is how the enzyme entrapped in the matrix and enzyme in the form of entrap in the form of a droplet so you can see pores are there so substrate can pass go pass inside get reacted and product can come out of this so advantages it is very simple easy to perform mild conditions are followed in the procedure the disadvantage are leakage of enzyme may occur due to wide pore size distribution in the gel reduce substrate acceptability to enzyme may take place sometime free radicals may be formed this may cause slight loss in the activity so we are doing the enzyme yeast which is uh, contain the enzyme which is being physically entrapped so procedure so we will be taking 1.5 gram of sodium alginate in 90 ml of water we will be dissolving it by stirring continuously and then we will be taking 1 gram of yeast in 10 ml of water and we will again dissolve 
If it is not dissolving, then we can uh, warm slightly on a water bath. So these two solutions we have prepared, that is sodium alginate in 90 ml of water and 1 gram of yeast in 10 ml of water. Then next, next step is mixing of sodium alginate solution with yeast with the yeast solution which we have prepared and mixing and mixing very well to form a uniform suspension of yeast in the sodium alginate. So next is we have to take uh, the syringe and fill the solution which we have made the suspension of yeast in the sodium alginate. So now let us take the petri dish and to the petri dish we will be adding calcium chloride solution which is prepared 0.5 molar and then yeast we have taken suspension which we have mixed we will take in the syringe and we will put at a certain height uh, in the petri dish which contains calcium chloride solution. So when we put the yeast suspension in sodium alginate into calcium chloride solution the yeast get immobilized and you form you get a globule like this. The same solution if we put in water, since calcium chloride is not there to form the entrapment, it will dissolve completely, you will not see the globules. So this is our immobilized enzyme. We have to leave this immobilized enzyme for 10 minutes and then we have to strain and keep ready, wash it with water, distilled water and keep ready for the chemical test. So now how can we... Uh, assume that our enzyme is immobilized. So let us see how we do the chemical test. So let us see how confirmatory test can be done. So we are taking the yeast globule which we have washed strained in water. So when we add water the enzyme is immobilized and that is in the form of globule. So in water the globules will sink because it does not contain any substrate. But similarly, if we take the same yeast, uh, yeast globules with hydrogen peroxide, you will see that the globules will float. They won't sink because the yeast enzyme present in the yeast will uh, react with the hydrogen peroxide and depletes the oxygen which makes the beads to float or the globules to float. So this confirms that our enzyme is immobile. Now let us see the next other confirmatory test. So we will be taking uh, yeast, the globules in sucrose solution and we will incubate for 15 minutes. So that what will happen, sucrose is can be hydrolyzed to fructose and glucose. But uh, since we have taken the globule, the yeast contain enzyme invertase which will react and the substrate will pass into the globules and the product will be formed. That means the sucrose will be hydrolyzed to fructose and glucose. So how we can uh, know that it has hydrolyzed or the enzyme has reacted. So simple thing is we will be adding filling A and B and mix well. And then next, what we will do is we will keep the test tube in the water bath. So when we keep the test tube into water bath the solution will turn into brick red because this reduction has takes place and this confirms that in, in enzyme is present and which is immobilized and the substrate is converted into the product because of the enzyme invertase. Here we have taken sucrose. So sucrose is converted into fructose and glucose by the enzyme invertase which is present in the yeast. So this further confirms that our enzyme is immobilized. So report we can write as the given yeast is immobilized by the entrap method. I hope you have understood. Thank you very much for understanding the procedure. Any doubts you can get it clarified. Happy learning.